I'm going to start with a simple question. To workers today, which is more important, uh, the flexibility of having a hybrid off uh, option or pay? <laughs> Depends how much money you're talking about. So I can give you a, a pretty accurate answer. We've surveyed around 20,000 Americans, and we asked them how much would you value being able to work from home two days a week, which is typical hybrid. And they said it's about the same as a 7 or 8% pay increase on average. So look, if you offered me 20% more money, most people will come back to the office full time. If you offered me 1% or 2%, they'd probably rather take two days a week at home. So as you, as some of your research has shown, we, the, the benefits of hybrid work, some of them are pretty simple and easy to identify. Number one, employees are happier. I get that. Number two, productivity is increased if you do it correctly. I get that. I think I see that. Uh, it saves space. In other words, the, the real estate footprint. I get that. But it also, you say, supports diversity, equity, and inclusion. Explain why. Yes, so one of the things you see is that people who are minorities in the workplace, which we define as less than 10% of your co-workers are the same race, same, actually same age, political view, uh, religion, you know, various other characteristics, feel slightly less comfortable coming into work every day. So, you know, I'll be 50 next year. If I was in a workplace full of folks in their 20s, you know, they're probably all on TikTok. I'm not. I don't really understand, you know, a lot of what they're talking about. I'm probably not as enthusiastic about coming in every day. And you can see that by race, by gender, by various characteristics. And what that means is if you're a firm and you force everyone back to the workplace five days a week, you can see which folks are most likely to want to quit first. So being tough on this and saying, look, you've all got to come back full time is going to generate some quits, but it's particularly going to generate quits for minorities by in various dimensions. That makes it hard to support diversity. Let's talk a little bit about how hybrid work can be gamed. And, and I'm thinking here of being of the situation being gamed by someone who wants to take advantage of the schedule to get greater face time uh, with their supervisor or maybe um, so. So how how does that play out and how do you prevent uh, that kind of gamesmanship uh, from entering into the equation? Yes. So, you know, it's a very interesting question. There are two things that firms should focus on. One's really obvious. One's much less obvious. So the obvious one is if you say got a three two hybrid plan is making sure folks come into the office three days a week. So typically, I mean, we just heard from Pfizer, that may look like, say, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you want everyone in there together. The thing that's much less obvious is what happens on Monday, Friday. And as you said, Tyler, it's important, actually, that folks work from home on Friday, because otherwise, imagine as two of us are in the same team. You come in Monday, Fridays, you hang out with some others, you hang out with management. I don't. You can imagine down the road, Who's more likely to get promoted? Who's going to get that raise? Who's going to get the good deal? And so it's actually really important that on work from home days, management and employees actually stay home so that everyone works well. And you basically don't have fear of missing out. You can relax at home, get on with your work without thinking there's something going on behind your back in the office. Yeah, and no one would have those kinds of paranoid thoughts. Absolutely. No, it never happens in a workplace. So, so what you're saying here is that it's critical if the, if the team have agreed that it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the, in the workplace and Mondays and Fridays at home, it is really important for the team leader to respect that and she or he work at home on Monday and Friday just the way the rest of the team is. Yes, totally. So, and this is something that really starts at the top. So I was talking to someone the other day and she said, look, pre-pandemic, actually, in my firm, we had work from home Fridays and a new CEO comes in and they say, you know what? I don't like being at home on Fridays. I'm going to come in. And of course, you know, the CEO comes in, the folks reporting to that CEO think they better come in. The folks reporting to the folks reporting think they better come in. And <laughs> she said the thing kind of unraveled from the top down. But to make it worse, she said, not everyone could come in. So if you had childcare responsibilities or something else conflicting on Friday, you had to stay home and you, you started to lose out. So it's important for leaders to stay home on days that are designated work from home days because everyone's going to take their leave.
So there are obviously companies and employers. We, we, we tend to think of companies because here at CNBC we mostly cover public companies. But, but there are a lot of employers that are not companies at all. They're state uh, offices or institutions right. or nonprofits or whatever. My question is this. No matter the scale of the company, is it best to have the exact same work from home or hybrid work policies across the entire enterprise, or should those decisions be made at a much smaller sort of team by team level? In other words, our events team is almost separate and distinct from our digital team, from our on-air team. Should the decisions on work from home be made enterprise-wide or by teams? So. You're asking all the tricky questions here. So to start off with, just to be clear, about half of Americans can't work from home at all. So, you know, half of people are in retail, frontline retail, you know, uh, nurses, doctors, a lot of people in you know, security. So we're now focusing on really the half of people that can. Amongst them, there are two flavors. It's kind of like red wine or white wine. It's not clear which is better or worse, but I'll give you the two flavors. So one flavor, for example, Lazard, Zoom, are saying we're going to have fixed days each week when everyone comes in. So a very standard policy would be, let's say, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Thursday. That's simple. You know that whenever you're in on those days, everyone else in the whole company's in. But you, in some ways, you lose a bit of flexibility. The other version, say, what you know, Google or Salesforce are heading towards is where team by team you pick the days which means mm -hmm. at least within teams, the people you work together, they're in on the same days. But different teams may have different days. They may even come in for more or less days. And I think which version you choose depends on whether you're one organization that's maybe on one location that you have similar activities or maybe something that's spread across multiple locations, multiple countries are very different, in which case you probably want a team by team setup. You know, I really take your point that obviously there are roughly half of Americans, I take your word on that, who can't work from home because of the nature of their work. If you're in a manufacturing uh, business and you're working on an assembly line, you can't very well do it from your front porch. But, but for the, that, that other half or whatever it is of workers who, who can work from home, we, we mentioned the benefits of it. Employees are happier. Productivity ideally is enhanced. Supports diversity, equity, and inclusion. Saves space. Well, those are four pretty, f pretty powerful metrics. Uh, so why come to work at all? What, what's the benefit of going to an office? <laughs> So, you know, hybrid, which is where you come into the office, say, three days a week and are at home, too, as long as it's what I call organized hybrid. So you come in on the same three days with your team workers, pretty much is all win. You know, it is famously you can have your cake and eat it. There's more of a trade off if you're talking about fully remote. So if you are never going to come in at all, you're going to work fully remote for five days a week. The, you know, the you know, there's some big upsides. You can live wherever you like. You don't have to commute, et cetera. But there's three big costs. The ones I hear a lot about are mentoring. So particularly for junior employees, you know, I'm at Stanford. If I think of my students that are starting out in their working life, they really value face-to-face -face mentoring. Second is innovation and creativity. It seems to be, it's kind of easier to be creative and kick around ideas when you're face-to-face. -face. And thirdly is building culture. So that's why most companies outside of big tech and outside of startups are pretty much going for hybrid. In big tech, think of Airbnb or Yelp, and a bunch of startups are fully remote, but that it is a much more extreme version, and that has some clear benefits, but also some clear costs. That's really, that really sort of puts it in a nutshell for me. It's, it's creativity, it's face-to-face -face collaboration. It is mentoring because you really couldn't mentor somebody if you're not uh, seeing them face-to-face. -face. So why is it, Nick, that in those companies that have gone with hybrid, they typically do Mondays and Fridays off, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays in? What's the magic of that? Why Did that just happen, or is it, is it a, a studied, <laughs> considered uh, uh, outcome, or what? So this has been a journey. So the two things to know where you end up with that is, one, people really like to work from home Monday, Friday. You can kind of guess why. You know, you can have yeah. you know, a long weekend. It gives you, gives you more flexibility, but it's still the fact they like it. And two, we seem to need, and it, again, depends job by job, but something like 50, 60, 40 percent of our time face to face. So think of pre-pandemic. Go through the week and think, look, in the week, which activities were best in person? Mentoring, training, lunches, 
presentations, put that in one block, and which activities were best individually, you know, reading, writing, data work, and put that in another block. Turns out the first block for many com you know, organizations and jobs is about 50%. So post-pandemic, we're kind of being smart. We're saying, let's take that block, let's crush it into three days, and then the upside is we have two days a week, we don't need to commute, we can work quietly at home, and this is why it's turned out to be a win-win. The, the critical thing is it's well organized. What's, you know, the disastrous hybrid is what I call chaotic hybrid, where some people are on Monday, some on Tuesday, some on Wednesday, and then you hear these stories of folks saying, I came into the office, I spent all day on Zoom, no one was there, it was low energy, I felt like I wasted my time commuting. So, what does your research tell you? What do your instincts as a, as a student of business, a student of the workplace, what do, what do those instincts and your research tell you about the enduring nature of hybrid work? Is it here to stay, or do you think that five years down the road, um, we'll be back to sort of five days a week in the office, or something completely different? What do you think? Yes, this is, yeah, that's the $64,000 question. I actually feel pretty confident about the answer and I explain why. So I, the answer is I think we're in a kind of Nike swoosh. So we'll drop a little bit and then in the long run, certainly five years out, be higher than we are now. So to explain currently about 30% of working days in America are home, about 70% are on the business premises. That 30% is kind of flat. It may drop a little bit to say 25%. That's not a big drop with a recession. Long run, the reason why I'm positive about the rise and why I think this is a huge opportunity is technology drives everything. So I've been working on working from home for 20 years. And if you go back even 10 years, it was way worse. It was like telephone calls, you know, emailing files. It wasn't great. Now we have the cloud. We have video calls. It's a lot easier. When I talk to hardware, software firms, startups, pretty much everyone, they are saying right now, they are massively investing in R&D to make remote work better. So the market's exploded. We see five or six times as many people now work from home. So if you're anyone from Microsoft to Google to Apple to all these startups, there's a huge payoff for coming up with that next tech or that next app. And so technological progress to support work from home is taking off. So if you look three, five, certainly 10 years out, we're gonna have amazing things, you know, maybe you know, huge screens, fantastic microphones, augmented reality, the metaverse, all of this stuff is going to be much, you know, much better. So if you're planning three, certainly five years out, I would look towards higher levels of work from home than we have now, certainly not lower. Yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, obviously we all went through a different circumstances, but a similar but a similar situation during the pandemic. When we left the office in March of 2020, it was amazing and we were able to execute from home because the technology that hadn't been there five years earlier magically, mystically was there so you could so you could do it. Let, let me let me just drill down a little bit on something. How do you know that hybrid work or people working from home are as or more productive than those who are in the office? Because I think that's one point of at least management skepticism among those managers who are skeptical. Sure, I, you know, there's quite a lot of studies. Maybe the most convincing is one I've just wrapped up. It was with Trip.com. It's one of the big three travel agents in the world. And uh, their chairman, co-founding CEO is actually my student in Stanford about a decade ago, James Liang. And James and Jane Sun, who's the CEO, agreed to do and ran a big randomized control trial. So they took Two divisions. These were graduates, about a third of them are postgrads. They're like uh, people in data, marketing, finance, etc. And they randomized them. So people with even birthdays had to stay in the office five days a week. Folks with odd birthdays, so if you're born on like the first, third, fifth of the month, etc., you work from home Wednesday, Friday. They tracked them for six months. They found, you know, the two most important findings were quit rates were down by a third for people who are allowed to work from home two days mm. a week, and performance was up 8%. So at the end of the six months, they're like, you know, there's some other benefits. There just didn't seem to be any downside, and the board just rolled it out for the whole company. So I've seen this in other studies and other research. The benefits of hybrid seem very large. You can flip it around and say, this kind of explains why pretty much every large firm, organization, charity, even university I talk to, are moving towards hybrid for professionals and managers. 
let's let's talk a little bit about uptake and 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 sort of belief in the virtue of hybrid work across the generations of the workforce. What does that tell? What do you find in your research? Are younger people more embracing of uh, hybrid work versus the old dinosaurs like me? What do you <laughs> see there? So um, yes, there there is some variation, but to be clear. Every decade from 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, on average, wants to come in somewhere between two to three days a week. So most people say, I like some time at home and I like some in the office. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to look at the differences, it's a bit of a U-shape. So folks in their 20s have the highest preference to come into the office. They really value mentoring and they value socializing. So I think of my students, they're mostly pretty unhappy when they've had to work fully remotely. People in the 30s and 40s have the strongest preference to work from home. And it's generally because they have young kids. They live in you know, a nice house out in suburbia and you know that it kind of works for them. And then by the time you get to the 50s upwards, most people's kids are out the house or older. You know, I have teenagers, you can, you know, it, 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 maybe you, know, you, you want to leave the house possibly rather than be in the house when they're around. But that generates as you get in 50 plus, people want to come back to the office. But again, you know, there is some generational divide. The striking fact is most folks want to be at home for two, three days a week, but also really enjoy coming into the office for two, three days a week to socialize and work with colleagues in face. You really opened my eyes there because with that U-shape uh, uh, metaphor, I would have thought you were going to say that the younger workers um, want to stay home more than they want to come in. But you said they want to come in because they value the mentorship. It's, it's, the, it's the folks in the middle of life who may have uh, parenting responsibilities or caring for an aging parent uh, who, who value the stay-at-home part. And then at the backside, the old, the old guys like me want to get the hell out of the house <laughs> and, and go, to, go to work. Final question. As you went through um, the pandemic, and I'm sure Stanford was like... Um, many universities, you went to virtual instruction. What was your experience with that? Did you find that the students were as engaged? Did you find that their performance was as high as you would have expected? What, what did you observe as you were going through that experience in a very personal way of either hybrid or fully remote classwork? So I, I, I felt like everything I experienced matched all the data I've seen coming out from my research. So teaching and research seminars were so much better in person. So I did my best with you know remote teaching. We had to do it for two years, but it's hard. It feels like the bandwidth is narrow. It's, you can't lecture online, just you know, it's so boring. You're competing with Netflix or you know, movies or whatever else, you know, somebody's kid in the background. So Teaching is definitely better in person. I honestly think a chunk of it is what I'll call the personal trainer effect. It's kind of like, why do people hire personal trainers? It gives them an incentive to do exercise. It's kind of like when I'm a professor in the classroom, uh, I try and get my students off devices, focusing on class. It's very you know, engaged, lots of discussion. And it means they pay attention. You've got them in the room for an hour and a half. It's very hard to do that when they're on the other side of a laptop. You can't really see what's going on. So I think for me and for the future of teaching, there's a lot of stuff that's better in person. But there are also some activities like reading, writing, maybe meeting students one-on-one -on -one that's actually fine uh, over Zoom or remotely. So like everything else, you know, the future of universities is also hybrid.